<laughs> that's not happy. Okay, any more heavy butts? Love announcements, Robin. Oh, yeah. Yep. Come on. So, um, just for those end of the year tax deductions and our ever rotating every year, I did get three more last week. We're up to about uh, $1,800 on all of about 6000 So every rotating every year, $100. There's a sheet there on your table. Get that to me uh, before the end of the year. Uh, we got till June 30th. We've got all kinds of time, but you want to get your donation in this year, fill that out and get it to me. Thank you, Robin. Any more closing down? Yes. I know a lot that you would have asked me in the album for me to the interact meetings. Next Wednesday is our last <laughs> interact meeting for this year. And I mean, it is at 8.15 a.m. at the Polo County High School. So if any of you would like to Join me. I'm sure they've got some <laughs> activities planned, but you're welcome to be there. So, 8.15 next Wednesday. Is there anybody yeah. hoping to attend that meeting? Anyone else? Any more club announcements? We've got a if couple. Not, yeah, we have a couple. Who was uh, you want to grab it? Yeah. Bobby, we want you to come up real quick. Bobby Stess, we had it forward. For, for many years, our club has been participating in the Stess and Food Drive that happens during Christmas time, and we're really excited about being able to continue to do that. But we also, as we have had it uh, sponsored in the past, Put some money together so that we can sponsor some hand purchases as well. So this is from the the board and wanted to, to say thank you for all that you're doing and to good luck with this year. I'm going to take a photo. <laughs> it's okay. I was trying to scare you. Thank you so much, Bobby. For all you did. Volunteering at the club for uh, packing the boxes and food meets, but you want to share a little bit about this year? Right. Uh, I've got some flyers on the table and some uh, candy canes. So this year we'll be at Crestwood Methodist Church again, and uh, you all come on Tuesday the twelfth at lunchtime. We'll be open for you. We'll be taking care of three hundred families through the schools and through community chats, and we are very excited to have lots of. Rotarians there helping out. We couldn't do it without you all. Um, we have uh, churches volunteering, schools volunteering. So anybody who wants to come out, our our work nights are the 11th, 12th, 13th, and 14th from 6 to 8 p.m. And then we deliver on Saturday morning really early. My Rotary Club has to get up at 6 a.m. to go pick up the hams, the bread, and the milk. I wouldn't do that to y'all. But uh, <laughs> from 8.30 to 11.30, we are delivering, and we come down Cavanaugh Road through the Sanctuary parking lot over to Pryor Avenue. And from there, we have two lines, and we deliver the food to the families. And each oh. box, there'll be three to four boxes, and each family's information is on there because we need their name, their address, and phone number. And in case they're not home, they're, what, they know Saturday? it's Saturday, December 16th. We try to always do it the Saturday after school is out to stock the pantry. It started in 1945 per the old And there were 30 families that got one basket of food and they used to deliver it Christmas Eve. But we found that they need them. And we've been working with all the superintendents. Blake was great to work with. Uh, so that we can get these families the food that they need because a lot of our kids are free or reduced lunch, uh, blessings and backpack kiddos, we get dog kiddos, just kiddos that need a little help. So uh, and on the, uh, the tables also put a list of the foods that we can use and we can use cash donations. Your big donation will buy a lot of hams for us. We buy everything as local as possible, hams from Crestwood Meats, we buy apples and potatoes from Reardon's and we have a good relationship with Crestwood, Walmart and John and we get a lot of our bread, milk, and everything else from there. And then donations from schools and churches. 
So thank you so much. Merry Christmas. Bobby. 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 Yes, questions. Yes, the drop off at Crestwood United Methodist. Not yes. exactly a small building block. Okay, there's a huge gymnasium and it says, I think it says Family Life Center on it. I don't remember what exactly it says. And there are glass doors and we keep the glass doors unlocked. And then Bill and I go up every day. The food has been dropped off and there's big signs that say Barry says Christmas food baskets. Okay. And we move the food into the building. So that's in that link between the building. Yes, it's mm -hmm. between the church office and the uh, uh, Parsonese. Great big tall building. You can't miss it. Are there any other rotary clubs that are helping with the baskets? Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, um, your LaGrange Rotary and South Oldham Rotary are helping with the Christmas food baskets. And we are coming on December the 12th. Mm -hmm. At lunchtime. At lunch. And we're going to have pizza and all kinds of fun things. <laughs> right. And we will, we don't get the gym until that Friday after preschool's over and after basketball's over. So we'll try to have it organized and ready to go when you all get there on that Tuesday. We get the flat boxes that day. And, um, so our rotary group is going to put the boxes, physically put boxes together so that we're ready to go. So right. we appreciate well, we have everything. Great turnout from our club. Oh, you club. always have a great turnout. I'm always impressed. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mom. Thank you. Thank you for all you do. We hope you guys help us help us so Hello. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to. Is this real, real quick, guys? Uh, oh, hold on. The, uh, we had our first weekend ringing the, the bell for the Salvation Army. Thank you for everybody that uh, served this past weekend. Uh, the LaGrange location for the next three weekends, including the weekend that the Interact Club is uh, ringing, they are uh, full, so that's great. So there's a sign-up sheet that's going around. And as I look around the room, I tell you, most of the people in this room are ringing the bell at some point. So I give you big, uh, big uh, thanks uh, for that. But we are going to uh, try to staff the Buckner location. Hopefully it's a little busier than it was this weekend. I think that UK U of L game may have held the uh, traffic down a little bit. Um, I didn't see a lot of UK U of L uh, traffic uh, between uh, noon and three, but you know, um, anyways, uh, and I'm holding this because, you know, several weeks ago, Salvation Army brought us this plaque and you notice what it says, second place. And you know what Ricky Bobby says? If you ain't first, you're last, right? So, you know, I'm figuring if we get both locations, the Grange and Buckner, uh, we can knock off these, uh, what's that group called? Kiwi, Ki something, Kiwana. Yeah, Kiwanas. Uh, and uh, come in come in first. But again, we know it's worth the cause. We raised uh, around $9,000 last year. So I'm hoping we can get into uh, five figures uh, this year. One of the other things that we're doing, um, got a couple of these signs that were made up. Because, you know, we don't do a real good job as Rotarians marketing ourselves. You know, we're standing there. We got our, our red aprons on. And people just think we work for the Salvation Army. So another good opportunity for us to, you know, let people know this is Rotarians working in their community uh, to raise mon money for this. Uh, the one thing I wanted to bring up about this, though, is that these will be at your stands uh, when you're working. But the Salvation Army made it very uh, specific that do not solicit people about rotary if people say hey can you tell me about rotary yes absolutely and we'll have our little uh pamphlets there as well you're welcome to give it to them but only if people are inquired so we're not going to actively say hey would you like to know learn more about rotary that's a no-no for salvation army okay but thank you very much again look forward to getting that address those shifts filled thank you Blaine. Blaine. Al? Sure. i'm ready <laughs> <laughs> something else that's helpful to remember is wear comfortable clothes because there's a Salvation Army smock that will cover up all your Rotary Club clothes, so it doesn't really matter what you wear. Just wear the smock, and 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 I had a lot of fun because it was a big big day Saturday. Um, I, I played both sides of that fence for the kids in need. I, whenever there was a Cats jersey, I said "Go Cats." And there was a card jersey. I said, "Go card!" And every now and then they come in together. And then they look at me like, "Wait, you're cheating! You can't cheer on both teams." <laughs> and I said, "It's for the kids." Yeah. Yeah. And go cards. Yeah. All right. So uh, it's great, great opportunity to uh, help out the community and help out the Salvation Army. So I hope that you'll sign up. We get plenty of people involved. Um, before we introduce the students of the month next week. Uh, for the first time in a number of years, the um, Oldham County High School Jazz Band will be doing a Christmas concert for us. Uh, 
Hope Gardner's son is in the band. He's one of the percussionists. So I, she'll be beaming, proud mom. And the, the schedule is this. At, uh, they're arriving here at 1130 to set up. They'll be done around noon, uh, ready to play. And so uh, as soon as we have the crowd in and, and get your food, then they're going to start playing about 12, 10, 12, 15. Then they're going to eat after a 30 minute concert. Um, so if you want to have more time for fellowship, come early. Um, uh, uh, Donna, about, about what time do you think we'll have some food out ready to eat next year? Uh, Joyce, where's. <laughs> so don't worry about the food. <laughs> Taking the pizza. Pizza up. So um, we can get here probably around 11 30. We're going to put out pizzas because Donna's uh, kind of asked me to do that. Okay. And it's not a big deal. Just get your food in time, too, because you'll get to enjoy a dinner theater kind of experience as the uh, band plays and can keep eating. And then we'll do all the announcements and all that other stuff after the concert. Okay. Very good. And we're feeding the, uh, the young people as well. So uh, if we need to make some arrangements, uh, uh, make sure we have plenty of tables and chairs for everybody. And um, I think that's all the announcements I need to make. So Tanya Byrne, you please come forward and, and introduce your all's arguments <laughs> of the month. Yeah. Oh, wow. Holy cow. Yeah. Man down. Okay. Go ahead. okay. Um, I am Tanya Burns. Um, I teach the here at the Arvin Center, uh, the Biomedical Academy of Sears. So um, it's a four-year program. Most of you probably have heard. Um, and so we have to do four years. Most of these students are going to go into um, STEM careers, science careers, medicine, nursing, um, and things like that. So I, it is my pleasure. Um, I've had the pleasure of knowing the student for two years now. Um, she's been in the program for four, um, but, but she, I've had her for two years with in class and then also as the uh, POSA sponsor for the future um, health professionals club that we have here um and so Addie husband it is my distinct pleasure to know you so, uh, come on up. hello everyone um, my name is Addie um, I'm a senior at Orange County High School but like Ms. Burns said and this is my fourth year at Oregon and I'm um, with our summit um, first of all, I want to thank each and every one of you for having me this afternoon. It's truly an honor to be recognized by the Lagrange Board of an honor which I do not take lightly and am extremely grateful. My appreciation for individuals such as yourself is unmatched. I dedicate so much time and effort to making sure that students and everyone else in our community get to experience the best work possible. It's because of you that my peers and I have the courage and ability to pursue our dreams. When I learned of my nomination for this recognition, I was given a paper with a few prompts to help me write this speech. I took one look at the list and knew exactly what I was going to say. My ability to take on challenges, be successful in my education, and stand up here in front of all of you is merely my doing. I'm a reflection of the strength, effort, kindness, and selflessness of the important people in my life. I am who I am because of the people that I love. And so, I would like to dedicate this nomination and this speech to them. First, I would be crazy not to mention the person who gave me this nomination, Miss Tommy Burns. She always reminds me to mention her in my Nobel Peace Prize speech. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess this will have to be Mrs. Burns is one of a kind. Even if you've never spoken to her, if you simply watch as students gather in her room before and after school and in between classes, you will see that her easy game, fun, yet incredibly intelligent and disciplined nature can make anyone in the world feel seen, heard, and important. Mrs. Burns has taught me that it is okay to mess up, have fun, and enjoy school, as long as you remain teachable and learn in the process. Mrs. Burns, thank you for being the best biomedical teacher to ever exist, and an even better person. Not only has your class provided me with skills, knowledge, and experience that will benefit me throughout my career, 
but the spark, which you brought back into my education, will stick with me and motivate me as well. On my prompt sheet, it asks, if you could have lunch with one of your heroes, what would you want to talk about? I've gone through a lot of loss throughout my high school experience. Both of my grandfathers, along with my great-grandmother, have become my guardian angels since the beginning of my freshman year. As the first half of my senior year comes to a close, I still cannot wrap my head around the fact that I will not be able to hug them or even just call them after I walk across that graduation stage in June next year. For that reason, I could not possibly pick only one of them to visit with. Although none of you in this room ever met them, you are learning about them now, as I reflect on their words of wisdom, which have shaped who I am. If I were to have lunch with all of them today, I know that they would remind me of a few things. First, my kupa would remind me to always be good. Two simple little words, yet so important to remember. It would remind me to treat people with respect, do my best effort at all times, and to laugh often. To him, that's what being good meant. My papa would simply remind me to be honest, never take any shortcuts, and to not be afraid of adversity. Lastly, my mama Tim, who lived to be 97 years old, would be upset with me. This is because I think I figured out one of the many secrets she kept for living a long, happy life. My mama Tim would remind me to greet anyone and everyone with a smile, a hug or shake of hands, and a simple hello. That's the key to surrounding yourself with people who give you life and you make yours a whole lot better. It is these reminders which allow me to navigate and to navigate my everyday life. And therefore, they are the reason I'm standing here today. To my parents, sitting right there, you deserve a lot of credit too. Thank you for being here today to support me and for being there for every step of my journey through life as well. My respect and love for you goes beyond what I will ever be able to put into words. To everyone here today, Thank you for giving me the opportunity to exemplify my passion for learning, my love for my family, and my excitement and gratitude to be doing this opportunity. Thank you. Congratulations, Addie. Um, OCHS, we have two other additional students here this month or the month of December. Uh, first up, we have Cooper Pataja. Cooper has been active in, uh, in a lot of different things at school, including being on the uh, men's lacrosse team uh, through a lot of times where the coaching situation has been kind of prepared. So just the tenacity to stick with that has, has been great for him. Uh, so without further ado, Cooper Pataja. Hello. Uh, like I said, my name is Cooper. Uh, first off, I want to thank uh, my parents for being here. Oh. Can you hear me now? There, there we go. Oh, yeah. uh, I want to thank my parents for being here. I want to thank my grandparents for being here. Uh, I am a, currently a senior in high school at Holland High School. I have two younger sisters that are uh, freshmen at Holland High School. And uh, well, first, I want to thank my uh, teachers for nominating me and voting for me to be here. Uh, it's definitely a huge honor uh, to be standing in front of you guys. And uh, when I found out I won, uh, uh, I think I was, uh, you know, given a sheet with a bunch of prompts, what I wanted to talk about. And uh, I kind of was looking through them, and none of them really kind of stuck out to me. But one of them uh, talked about like what is what experience or experiences that made you as a as a person or made you as you are now. And uh, I couldn't really think off the top of my head what which uh, experience I wanted to you know talk about. I lived in Oldham County just about my entire life. My Parents are Oldham County alumni, so uh, definitely love this place. It's nothing, nothing too crazy has happened here. But, uh, but uh, then I, it kind of just hit me what, uh, what's kind of been affecting all of us this past. Uh, def, I can't say all of us this past few years. That's been, uh, I say COVID. You know, I can say it's soon. That's like that each and every one of us here. And so uh, when COVID hit, I was, uh, I was in eighth grade. Uh, hit. March, I, I remember it was March 12th. Uh, we didn't have school the next Friday since so teacher work day. I remember thinking, oh, we'll be off for two weeks and we'll be back, see my friends. It'd be great. That did not happen. The uh, last time I saw a lot of those people was on a little little Chromebook screen and that was it. Then it was, it was off to high school. Uh, so it was definitely a struggle in my uh, transitional period of 
of life going from middle school to high school. And, uh, you know, during that time, there was lockdowns. Uh, there wasn't much to do to stay connected other than, you know, playing video games with friends. That was kind of that was kind of it. And so I would just kind of just do that all day. And that was that was really it. That was my summer of 2020 and doing it to high school. I remember uh, just being so excited for, for high school to start, not just because of the new school, just because to see friends again. I remember uh, just feeling so... Uh, Kind of let down when I thought we had to go back on the NTI, but it was it was fine. I eventually, fortunately, we went back to in person. Uh, we had to wear masks, which I know we all had to play our part in that, but it still kind of still kind of stunk a little bit, you know, being in a being in a school with so many people and still feeling you know so alone, wearing covering your face, you know, not really get to have that human uh, connection with people. It really uh it really stunk with the. Uh, Kind of dealing with isolation and, uh, and depression for me for sure and so uh, eventually got through freshman year and then off the sophomore year you know we worked masks on and on uh, but eventually it was just free to go no masks uh last year with my junior year that was my first full year of high school uh, and it's i can say it was my favorite year of high school just because of that having a normal year and uh, Ruth, I tell you all this, you know, COVID, we all have our own COVID stories, but uh, the reason I tell you about COVID is uh, what got me through COVID, what got me through those, those two years. And the first thing that got me through it was uh, was building a pool in my backyard with my dad, my grandpa, and my uncle. So, you know, going back to the 2020 lockdowns, couldn't, couldn't really do much. So we're like, well, we'll just we'll build a pool. So my dad is... Uh, my dad is a structural engineer, so he he roughly knew what he was doing. Uh, it was a forty thousand gallon pool. If you want to know more about it, ask him. <laughs> I don't know much about it. I was just the manual labor. It was free work. Yeah. But no, it was uh, it was definitely an experience to work alongside my, my dad, my grandpa, and my my uncle to to see the the men that have uh, played such a vital role in my life to see them at at work and get to, you know, work alongside them. And just, I definitely can say I kind of earned my manhood a little bit. Just, just doing that, working all day and uh, working out in the hot sun or working in the cold rain. And so uh, as rough as it sounds, I kind of, I loved it, just the simplicity of just uh, just working all day and then just going at night and then doing all over again. And so I can definitely say uh, that's kind of, that's affected by him uh, today. The other thing that is, Made me who I am, or helped me get through COVID was is uh, playing drums. Uh, I played drums at Southeast uh, Lagrange campus. I played it for about two years, but uh, before COVID, I was in the uh, I did percussion at East Old Middle School, and uh, I remember it was going to my seventh grade year of yeah middle school. My parents bought me a used forty dollar drum set off the Old County Buy Sell Trade. Uh, just to see if it would stick, and it it kind of did. Uh, you know, I would play off and on when I got home from school. I thought it was cool just to say I played the drums, but uh, but when uh COVID hit, you know, there wasn't going back to COVID. There wasn't much to do other than play video games and building a pool. So whenever I was doing any of those, I would I really found my love and passion for playing drums. I uh, found it was a way for me to express myself uh, and express myself when I would be able to express myself through my words. It was definitely easier way to articulate how I felt, just uh, to lead. It was definitely an outlet for, for me to release my emotions, my frustrations, and other ways I wouldn't know. And, and even when I would, I still do this now, even going to school, if, whether it's a good, uh, bad day, just go home and get on the drums a little bit. But I definitely uh, found a love and passion for it during that time period. Remember, uh, you know, just, uh, when I found out, like, I really loved it, really wanted to stick with it, just thinking, uh, man, how can I get out of playing this cold, dark basement all by myself? I need to, need to get out of here. And uh, thankfully, I got plugged into the Southeastern Grange. Uh, I've been playing there since sophomore year. I play just, just about every week. Uh, you could say I'm one of the better drummers, but <laughs> <laughs> don't ask. Uh, but no, I love it. It's definitely something I'm very passionate about. And... Uh, and yeah, uh, I'll be playing this Sunday if you want to come and check me out. <laughs> but once again, I want to thank thank you all for having me here. Uh, it's definitely an honor. 
uh, <laughs> and take my teachers and uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> All right, so next up we have Caitlin Wagner. Uh, Caitlin was accepted into the Governor's Fellow Program last summer, uh, and she is the keeper for our girls' soccer team, regional runner up girls' soccer team. So, Caitlin Wagner. Thank you. Um, hi, my name is Caitlin Wagner. I'm 17 years old, and I'm a senior at Oldham County High School. First off, I just want to say thank you for inviting me here today and for naming me Oldham County High School Women's Student of the Month. It is such an honor to be here speaking to you. Today, I am joined by my father, Andrew Wagner, my mother, Karen Wagner, and my sister, who is actually just on the hall in an engineering program. As a family, we have lived in Oldham County for nine years. My sister and I have attended various Oldham County schools, including Locust Grove Elementary, East Oldham Middle School, and finally, Oldham County High School. Throughout my high school career, I've maintained a 4.3 GPA, taking seven AP courses and five dual credit courses, allowing me to earn my AP capstone diploma. During my time at OCHS, I was captain of the girls' soccer team uh, and helped lead the team to the region finals for the first time since 2016, was a youth ambassador where I spent a month of my summer in Brazil, and currently president of OCHS's NHS, National Honor Society, a member of Beta, Beta Club, I volunteer in East Oldham Middle School's highly structured special education classroom, all while holding just a couple of seasonal jobs. Over the years, I've organized a menstrual product donation, raising over 100 boxes and products, all which have been donated back to Oldham County Schools, and with help, helped organize uh, OCHS Girls Soccer Team's first kit cancer event, where we donated and raised $1,580 to Norton Children's Hospital, supporting kids' cancer research and outpatient cancer care. My plans after high school include attending Concordia University of Chicago to play soccer and to major in special education with the possibility of minoring in Spanish. If you don't know me, I am a obsessive planner and have spent way too much of my time thinking about not only my future in college, but my life past that leading me to often think about what is the goal in life? What is life's purpose? What's the difference between a good purpose, a bad purpose, or even what is a ideal purpose? Which is honestly a lot to think about at the age of 17. I believe that a life purpose is not only different for each person, but also can't really be answered at any point in any young, at this point in any young person's, per, per, person's life. I have not, we have not truly lived, and therefore we don't know our life's purpose, and none of us here can predict the future as much as we may wish. Leading to the conclusion that, again, we don't know our life's purpose, but that doesn't mean I'm not gonna try and find it, and that's what I'm gonna be spending the majority of my time talking to you about today. I'm so thankful that I have been given the tools by my own hard work, my school, and my parents to begin to shape my life and my future into satisfying my wants to have a purpose in this lifetime. When reflecting on my past, I can visualize a couple things. I want to think about them, I start to feel a pit in my stomach, but at the same time, a feeling of excitement that makes me want to know more. Just to name a few events, stepping onto the field for what would be my last high school soccer game, stepping into Dr. Connie Morrison's classroom for the first special, highly structured special education classroom for the first time in seventh grade. Traveling to a new country with strangers, going to a new city, not knowing any, spending way too much money on Taylor Swift tickets, <laughs> and finally, playing soccer, which allowed me to meet some of my closest friends, and the imminent goodbye approaching us this August, ultimately leading to what I hope my goal in life will be for my hopeful ideal purpose, which is to remain curious. There is so much we don't know about in life, from the brain to undiscovered ecosystems to outer space, the unknown is infinite. My biggest fear is to get caught up in the stereotypical cycle of stressing about finances and monetary needs, losing my want for curiosity as a sacrifice for a more traditional life. But most kids in my position, including myself, have already fallen into this fear. The overwhelming pressure of, of college and the rising price of furthering your education turns many students' free time into staring at computer screens, filling out financial aid forms and scholarship applications. Not only stressing about 
the college price tag, but the rising gas passes, prices, call, ooh, sorry, car insurance, and so much more adds up quickly. At some point in my high school career, rather recently, I finally realized and accepted that being curious and staying curious is so much more important. The feeling of putting money into a savings account will never beat doing the things I love. Whether it's food, places, ex or new experiences, I find joy in new memories shared with others, something money can't buy. I feed my curiosity by hiking, never ordering the same thing twice at a restaurant, being the first to volunteer and looking for adrenaline-seeking activities. I hope to stay curious in the future by experiencing new cultures all throughout the world. I went to have lunch at a cafe in Paris, swim the sharks in Australia, watch Chinese New Year in Beijing, participate in Carnival in, in Brazil, spend the day with elephants in Thailand and watch the stars in Argentina. I want to experience the lives of all those around the world, taking my education degree and teaching in other countries. Whether it's English in Costa Rica or special education in Spain, I know that my passion for helping those in need and staying curious will lead me to a fulfilled life. I hope after this talk today, you have a chance to reflect on your own life and your future life. How will your life be fulfilled? And most importantly, how will you stay curious? Thank you. <clears throat> I'd like to invite all three students to come forward. Let's see, oh, does she on a schedule? Oh, okay. Just want to go first. Yeah. So, uh, as a, uh, a a way to remember or help you all remember this day with us, I would like to give each of you a four-way test coin. Thank you all for sharing with us. We appreciate it very much. And we will also be donating, uh, making a donation to Polio Plus in your all's names as our speakers today to help eradicate polio around the world. So you all are a part of that as well. And we're gonna get some pictures here in just a moment. Let's give our students the month. Wrap up the meeting. Thank you, guys and girls. Yes. Oh, can I have a second? Yeah, come on. I just want to talk to the students of the month. Uh, our club has a contest, speech contest every year. Um, it's based on the annual Rotary International theme, which this year is hope. You know, create, create hope in the world. Create hope in the world. And uh, our, the deadline for our contest is March, or the date of our contest will be March 5th next year. And uh, uh, Matt, uh, uh, Matt Steely will be working with me on the school. And if you have any interest in participating in this, you need to write a five to eight minute speech. And uh, there's criteria for it, and there's uh, a lot of information on that to get to Mr. Steely. So I, was, I encourage you all to look into this. We love, from what I've heard today, we're all naturals. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you. I want to thank all the students again. Thank you all very kindly for being here and taking your time off at our class. I'm sure you didn't mind. But uh, they were all three wonderful speakers, and we thank you all so very much.